Hello and welcome to another workshop in Scandi PWA ecosystem. So today we'll talk about the theme internals and to be more specific we will cover the data flow. Most of today's video will happen on this board so uh, let's start. So first let's define what is uh, available for us to create a flow from. So we have a presentation, so let's call them the components. So this is the presentation. And in the files, all files which contain presentation are marked with xxx.component.js. So those components have the presentation inside and the presentation could be images, the text that could contain some, uh, I don't know, button, it could contain some heading, it could contain some more text, whatever. So this is the presentation and those are the components. So those components, those components, they uh, have no logic inside of them, at least they must not have any logic. So we have an additional helpers for them, the wrappers around them, and they called containers. So they always called xxx.containers, container.js. And those files, what they do, they are just a simple algorithms to uh, provide the component with necessary formatted data. So what they can do, let's call them they can format they can format the data they can request the data they can what else they can do it's uh, uh, they can format they can request they can also interact with a global state so uh, interact interact with uh, global state and other things which are uh, which could be uh, summed up as the front-end back-end of the application. So this is also known as front-end back-end. So front-end back-end, very interesting FBI, very interesting uh, thing happening today. And this is the uh, so-called business logic of the application. So business logic of the application. Let's uh, write it a little bit differently. Business logic. Uh, so this is business logic. And uh, how they connect? Well, uh, the com container is wrapping and passing the data to the component so it's formatted requested uh interacted with global state somehow and it passed the data to the component what else can it do the component can call the function which is passed from the container so for example if we click on add to cart which is the ui element in presentation we want to add it to uh, the cart global state. So what we are doing is we are sending this request to uh, the container back and then this container interacts with a global state. So that's a thing and the containers are interacting with components. The components themselves they have styles. So let's write here that we have xxx.style uh, .scss and those are just helpers for our presentation. Those contain no data, so styles of course contain no data, and most probably uh, are simply simply describing how the, uh, the the component will look like. And here, right right here between of them, you might have one additional uh, utility chat part, which could be the configuration. So imagine this is the form. Uh, let's imagine a form and uh, a form field could have some validation. And this validation is stored in the .config.js file. So here we have a very small thing with just uh, 
defined defined the configuration and the defines of the configuration it could share information to the uh, container or component and its notation is xx.config.js so nothing special here and you can find an example in the form component so uh, for now what we know we have the component which renders the stuff which does the presentation we have styles for it which has no logic but is just a part of the presentation we have the container which contains business logic which wraps and makes the request uh, and uh, we have the configuration file which could contain the configuration required for a container or for a component very good so what else we have? So as I told, the uh, container can interact with the global state. But how will it do it? So it can call, uh, it can dispatch an action, but it can dispatch an action synchronously or asynchronously. So what we do here is we uh, have a different flow for asynchronous data and asynchronous events. So uh, let's write here, define our layer of global state so this is our global state managers global state and what we have here in the global state we'll have uh, two main uh, heroes it's the action dot xxx dot action dot js and the same goes for xxx dot reducer reducer.js i hope it is well seen let me check no it's very poorly seen let's uh let's switch it like this so we have xxx.reducer.js so reducer and action what are those so action is uh action defines how you can interact with the global state uh so what it does it defines defines API, I would say, to interact, to change the global state. So those are simple declarations. Uh, those are simple declarations like, for example, it defines out to cart action and by uh, triggering this action from container, you can change the global state. But uh, where does the add to cart, where the, the uh, cart information is stored itself? Well, it is stored in the global state, but uh, there is a manager of the state. If this is just a declaration of uh, how you can interact with it, this is a reducer, is a place where you uh, modify this data. So here you have the uh, handlers for those actions. So handlers handlers for uh, the act for the actions and also what what does it mean is that when you uh, when you fire an action when you dispatch an action it uh, go through and it goes through every reducer and if reducer is uh, catching the action and the type is correct the action type is matching the uh, reducers handler then the uh, action payload is gets uh, gets processed here and then the global state gets updated and this is how the uh, redux works in its main uh, in, in its core but also in the reducer we define the initial state of the application initial state and you might note that the reducers it could be hundreds of them in the application or it could be tens of them and basically the reducers are uh, those small pieces of the global state so if the global state is huge then our reducer contains a small part of it like we have a reducer specifically for cart global state we could have a reducer for specifically for user information etc so uh, the reducer is a small piece of the 
global state. And uh, this interaction between uh, actions and reducers, where you dispatch an action and then this action gets handled by the reducer, this interaction is called flux pattern, this pattern of iteration. So uh, if you ever hear, hear the flux pattern, let's call this down uh, flux pattern. Well, this is why, because this interaction between them, so uh, let's draw the a line. So the action gets dispatched, uh, dispatched, dispatched, and then basically the global state gets updated. And the uh, container, it can interact with our actions, it can dispatch them, but the uh, reducers, they can share the information from the global state to the container. So uh, if you want to read something from the global state, if you know, if you want to know what quantity is currently added to cart, then you ask, uh, then you include your reducer and from your reducer you try to access the, uh, so what you do is you write state, you write state, my reducer, reducer dot quantity. And this is, uh, a reference to your quantity uh, in the global state because my reducer as I told you is a part of a global state well very good uh, what else do we have this goes uh, true for this is true if your actions are uh, synchronous so like for example you could say that if I log in I log in immediately and I can uh, immediately dispatch this action and update all everyone who needs to know that I'm logged in. But what if I want to request some uh, products, like I want to synchronize the card itself? Uh, well, this action is not synchronous, so we need to execute the dispatch of this action well, uh, so later on when the uh, information is retrieved. So what we have here additionally, which is not usual to uh, normal to normal uh, flux pattern flow, we have here uh, the dispatcher so called. So this is called xxx dot dispatcher dispatcher dot js, and what this file does, this file actually uh, dispatches a synchronous section. So it does. It does some business logic and then it updates the state. So it uh, executes a business business logic and updates and dispatches dispatches the action dispatches the action. So what this means is that uh, this dispatcher can, for example, request a product and then dispatch an action. So here from your container, you can also call it, but now instead of immediate, uh, immediate response, immediate global state change, what you will have is some logic will be executed. It's executed when it's done, when the request is sent or where the broadcast API has update has been received, the dispatcher will will call the action and then it will be executed via the normal flow so it will dispatch an action the action will be dispatched and handled by the reducer and the reducer will update the global state and here in containers we uh, commonly have two functions which are connecting the uh, state and the connecting the global state uh, with actions and with reducers so First of all here, we have map dispatch to props, dispatch uh, to props, and we have here map action, map actions, uh, map dispatch to props and map state to props, and map uh, state to props. So what those functions do, uh, those functions allow you to control the actions, to dispatch actions from the props and you control the and get the state update from the props. So uh, they are used together with the connect function, 
connect function from Redux. So uh, they allow you to uh, connect with the global state. So without those functions, let's color them a little bit. So without those functions, without map, without map uh, dispatch to props, without this function and this function, without the connect itself, this interaction wouldn't be possible. So if you want to work with a global state, you need to have the connect function wrapping your uh, container uh, in the code. You might see you might see the examples of this in uh, the multiple components of ours. So what else do we have? Well, here and here we might have additional helper files which could help us to make the requests. What are those files? Well, very simply, it could be a query. So the query, because we have a query built dynamically, I hope it's as well seen, let me check. Well, a little bit worse, let me decrease the light. Hopefully this will be better. So the query, query uh, contains the uh, queries, basically queries for requests. And requests, as we already know, they can be sent from here and they can also be sent, let me make this a dashed line because they don't share data, it's just some uh, log it's just some helpers. And it can be shared to here because this is also can send the requests. So they contain a query and their format is xx.query.js. So uh, additionally, we have this group of fi files called utilities and they are very big. So those are utilities, utilities. They don't have any uh, specific formatting. Let me get back the light uh, like this. So they don't have anything specific inside. Uh, the utilities just uh, provide helpers for the uh, business logic. So if we have some repetitive action, which is like interacting with URLs and doing something, which uh, logic is very similar, so it gets encapsulated in the utility, and then the containers, uh, queries, the, and the and dispatchers or the even reducers can interact with it. So uh, the utilities, they are connected with the components, with the containers, with dispatchers. So it's everywhere. And also the queries could be connected to dispatchers. So here to dispatchers and to, yeah, very good. So uh, this is the data flow of the application. If you want to see it in action, you can uh, go to docs, scandipwa.com, and here you can open up the theme and open the uh, project, I assume, and here go to overview, data flow should be somewhere here, uh, Redux, yeah. So here is the data flow. As you might see the component, then it goes to the container. Then from the container, it could go to action dispatcher or it could go to uh, reducer immediately. Then we have the utilities, which help us. And then the updates go back to the container, which again updates uh, the component. So this is the data flow. And this is what you need to understand how works inside before you start to architecture your solution. So thank you guys for watching and see you in the next workshop.
Let's now open the code and try to search um, the example of this data flow and take uh, this information as the pattern to inspect. So uh, let's see the card coupons, for example. Well, we see the component and the component here only contains the uh, logic related to the rendering like this render apply coupon yeah and also it contains some handlers in terms of it can handle the form submit i see and it can also remove coupon which actually just uh, interacts with a state of entered coupon so nothing too much here all the logic of the handle remove coupon from card and the uh, apply of the coupon handle happens in this container and this is when I told you that the uh, card coupon could make some requests, for example, because I can see that it asks and it executes some actions from like remove coupon from card. And this uh, function, which is uh, declared on props, came from the map dispatch to prop so it's uh, came to us from the global state so this uh, container showcases as the connection to global state the connection to the component and also shows that some logic might be uh, contained in both the container and the uh, global dispatcher so we can see that it uses the dispatcher here let's visit the dispatcher and in this dispatcher we can see that it has uh, let's see coupon apply coupon to card it has a request logic and you might see that it uses some fetching to mutations and we can also see that there is a use of this card query so let's see what is card query it's a query well very cool let's open it up uh, so let's see the cart.query.js and here we can see that there should be a coupon yes apply coupon mutation very cool so you can see that we have this container interacting with dispatcher and inside of this dispatcher we are making a request and inside of this request we are asking for uh, the query and the query is being returned from the query specific place very interesting well what happens then in this dispatcher we see that we are applying the card coupons let's see um, coupon we are applying this coupon and this coupon gets this and then when this fetch is being executed we see that we are uh, handling this by dispatching another action this is dispatch or show notification and show notification is actually an action so we're dispatching a show notification action and then the reducer is catching this uh, this now show notification action has type show notification and by this type we have a reducer listening here notification reducer and this reducer is uh, updating the global state notifications when it receives the show notification stuff and it's very interesting so now we can see that dispatcher is dispatching some action and this action is being uh, is being handled by the reducer and uh, you can see that each action has a specific type declared and each reducer is listening for action of a specific type and then as the result of this handling it updates the state so in this case it appends the notifications to the state and you can also see that it declares the initial state here and the initial state is also contained so while well, the reducer contains the initial state and the logic for updating the state by the action so this pretty much is the whole data flow the only thing we haven't seen in this example is the requests from the container and we can see the example of this in for example the let's see data container from in the uh, let's say store switcher is the element which requests in the container and let's see where it has fetch data. Well, the get store list is executed upon the mount of the component. And from this, uh, and then when it's get executed, we are fetching the data. We're once again using the query. We can see that we are using query. So configuration query. And then by this configuration query, we're getting the store list. And we are, so it's very interesting. Well, uh, this is how this works. 
uh, you can request from the container, which is easier. You can request uh, from the dispatcher, but this requires you to make sure that the global state is implemented. And uh, Overall, you have uh, limitless possibilities, and this is the main architecture of Scandi PWA.